You're watching CNA Heroes. Here's Lisa Sweet. Welcome to CNA Heroes. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. Hello. Today's Friday, December 25th, 2020. Christmas. I've got to be honest here, I debated on how to open this segment as it's the last CNA Heroes segment of 2020. I pondered which CNA to feature. There are so many deserving CNAs. I decided to feature you, the CNA watching this segment, yes you. I recall filming CNA Hero segments this past spring, how I struggled getting through the videos without breaking down as I recognized CNAs who were battling COVID to save their residents and in turn to save themselves. At that time, the number of dead was less than 5,000 and I was horrified. I knew it would get worse. I just could not imagine how much worse it would get. So here we are 10 months later, the death toll is over 300,000 in the United States alone. Reliable sources indicate that nearly half of those deaths have occurred in nursing home residents and staff. I do not doubt the enormity of those numbers. They're probably actually even a little bit higher than that. Our country was unprepared for a pandemic and it took months before nursing homes were required to report resident COVID deaths, the process was inconsistent from state to state. Nursing home staff deaths are not being well documented either. This is a shame. It's close to impossible to find a reliable number of nursing home staff who have died of COVID-19, let alone CNA deaths from COVID. Many CNAs have succumbed to this deadly virus, paying the ultimate price of their lives. Many CNAs have suffered the virus, infected their families, and even lost family members to COVID. Yet CNAs are still clocking in for their shifts, working long hours without days off, trying to save their residents. For decades, CNAs have toiled in the shadows in nursing homes, taking care of America's most vulnerable and elderly with little to no recognition from society. It makes me sad and angry that it has taken over 100,000 nursing home lives to get this country's attention. For those of you who aren't CNAs, let me tell you a bit about what they have endured this year. CNAs are the lifeblood of any nursing home, delivering over 90% of the hands-on care. They are the ones who know how the residents like their morning coffee, what time of day they prefer to shower, and what time their favorite TV shows come on. CNAs worked without adequate personal protective equipment or PPE, especially through the spring and early summer, sometimes resorting to trash bags to improvise their own PPE as residents still had to be taken care of despite not having the necessary tools to protect themselves. So yes, CNAs took a bullet for their residents and our society. CNAs have sent their children to stay with relatives so they weren't bringing this incredibly infectious virus home. Some CNAs have actually lived in the nursing homes for weeks at a time to reduce the risk of bringing the virus into the nursing homes. Other CNAs have lost family and coworkers to COVID. CNAs have been blamed and shamed in the media for bringing COVID into the nursing homes. 
CNAs, most of whom make just above poverty wages, have been financially devastated by COVID and its impact. CNAs, by the nature of their pay, live on the edge of financial ruin. So many CNAs suffered the COVID virus themselves, experiencing severe symptoms and missing work, and many of them without any paid time off. Just imagine missing a week of work and not getting a paycheck. CNAs have so few resources to count on that many have lost their homes, their automobiles, and have resorted to selling their personal belongings to try to make ends meet. There's another sacrifice CNAs are making that few people are talking about. For the past 10 months, family visits have been prohibited at nursing homes. CNAs have tried to fill that gap and emotionally support the residents facilitating phone and video visits with their family. Earlier I stated that over 100,000 nursing home residents have died from COVID. Consequently, when I see that number, I also see over 100,000 caring, compassionate CNAs holding the hands of dying residents, holding the phone to the resident's ear for a last goodbye from family members, and over 100,000 CNAs providing post-mortem care to a resident they had physically nurtured and cared for, sometimes for many years. To provide care for a resident fighting for their life is a responsibility CNAs take seriously despite feeling very helpless. I know from experience that these unending resident deaths and the feelings of helplessness can easily lead to post-traumatic stress symptoms. The mental and emotional toll COVID has taken on our nation's CNAs working in nursing homes is enormous. So today I honor and recognize CNAs working in nursing homes. They're sacrificing so much with so very little support from society. To all of you working as CNAs, we here at NACA see your sacrifices. We see your efforts. We hear your pleas for help. We hear you weep from losing your residents. In our minds and hearts, you have always been our heroes and your extraordinary dedication through this pandemic exemplifies that. NACA has been working diligently to provide relief to you and for you. Lori Porter, NACA's CEO, has gone toe to toe with regulators, lawmakers, and the CDC fighting to get you more PPE, to get you more help, and to get you more pay. We have developed education, especially for you, the CNA, to learn about COVID, how to protect yourselves, and also to learn about the vaccine. We will not stop fighting for you. You are worth it and you deserve it. Thank you for taking care of our nation's most vulnerable during these dark times. So today, everyone, please join me in recognizing and honoring our nation's CNA heroes. Thank you.